So up to this point, you've probably seen the two massive pieces of conduit get delivered to my house. These are 12 foot diameter and 40 feet long when combined together, and they're gonna make a bunker in my backyard. You've also seen the flanges that we've created that bolt the two halves together and the massive hole that we dug to bury the whole thing underground. And I'm super glad that you've seen it because I have not. I'm filming these videos simultaneously and I really hope that whole process went smoothly. Today we're gonna to be building the entry and the exit shaft so that we can drop them down in the hole while the excavator is still here. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot that we need to get done, so let's get started. Big giant tubes underground don't do us a whole lot of good unless we can access those tubes. Graham, come here for a second. So Graham is the lead welder at our Not A Wheelchair facility. And on the shirt, you can see what portions we will be building. Over here, we have the exit shaft. And over here, we have the entrance with a hatch. And we will have an elevator in there at some point. But that will be for phase two. Right now, we just need to get everything in the ground. Without having a way to access my bunker underground, it's kind of worthless. And since my bunker's big enough to sleep six people, we need a substantial amount of metal. In the spirit of being open about how much everything costs for this project, all the steel from my local metal mart ran me about $18,549.37. This includes all the metal for the entry and exit shaft as well as the floor for the bunker. They offered delivery and I probably should have taken them up on it, but the Rivian handled it just fine. And we saved a few bucks. To build the entry and exit shafts for the bumper, we have to cut a lot of metal, and thick metal, because it has to support all the dirt around it. There are a few different ways of cutting metal. One is like a bandsaw type of thing, but that's really slow. There's two types of cutoff wheels. There's one that's an abrasive cutoff wheel that's super inexpensive, about $10 a blade, and one that's more expensive with carbide teeth that actually take and remove chunks of metal while the saw is cutting. It costs quite a bit more than a cutoff wheel at about $80 a blade, but it's also so much faster and so much more accurate. Instead of grinding and melting through the metal, we actually get a clean and accurate cut. Blue steel. For kicks and giggles, just for scale. This is the bottom, and that's gonna be the top of the shaft. This is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. We don't wanna weld the shaft on the ground because we have to have access for every single weld. So we built these saw horses that's gonna hold the entire structure. It's being built out of quarter inch, two by two hollow structural steel. And we got the welder right there. We're basically building the whole thing on its side. Inside of this shaft is gonna be a shower and an elevator and you know, plenty of room for activities. It'll be about 18 feet tall, 12 feet wide, and spaced about six feet from the bunker door. Before we start welding anything, I just wanna make sure the whole thing is square by measuring diagonal to diagonal and making sure the measurements are the same. If we tack the initial welds Kawampus, the whole thing is gonna be off. Being square is relatively important to this whole project because the walls themselves are gonna be holding back quite a bit of dirt and dirt weighs quite a bit. The entry point is gonna be six foot square and at some point I'll probably have a lid made out of solar panels to charge the internal batteries, but that'll be a problem for a different day. Tyson, since this was your idea, how does this work? Uh, we welded these clamps onto this long tube here, and we just slide that across, line it up. That holds our pieces right there until we pack it all up. Right. 
We're using a ratchet strap to pull tight and move these sides over a little bit so that this area stays square. Oh, that was almost it. This is probably one of the coolest tools we have on the whole project. It is a magnet capable of lifting 600 kilograms. I can set it down just fine without it connecting. It's only when you switch this lever that the magnet engages and I can lift up, oh, the camera, and I can lift up this whole sheet. We're gonna see how much it weighs right now. I can disengage the magnet, easy. Each sheet is 540 pounds. And I don't know about you, but I don't want a 500 pound metal sheet hanging 10 feet above my head. If that were to slip off of the magnet, it could literally slice a human in half, which is why we got a telehandler. We're taking off the sawhorses now to bring the overall height down about three feet. Stand up, the way, good. Ah. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's the doorway. The telehandler added $2,249 onto the cost of the project, but you can't put a price on safety or speed. And we're trying to get this whole thing in the hole before it snows. I don't think I've introduced Nate yet. He's been with us for about a year. I brought him on to build wheelchairs, but it turns out his skills are incredibly applicable to building bunkers. To be fair, there is some crossover. The bunker will have a wheelchair lift inside of it. It's rather difficult making a vertical shaft accessible, but we have a plan. low underground is the thermal insulation of the earth. Sounds like we're in a cave. <laughs> this is the coolest project ever. So underneath the earth we will be about 60 degrees year round even when there's snow on the ground above us. And 60 degrees is a very livable temperature but it's not a very comfortable temperature for long periods of time. I'm gonna have two types of air filtration systems in here. One for biohazards, obviously, and another one just for heating and cooling. The only problem, though, is that the heating and cooling uses a lot of electricity, about 1,500 watts. Luckily for us, though, I found a bed that is both heated and cooled, making it the absolute best bed for the apocalypse, while at the same time being the worst bed for an apocalypse, and I'll get to that in a second. But huge thanks to 8sleep for sponsoring this video and supporting the project. 
The 8 Sleep Pod mattress cover only uses about 200 watts while getting itself up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit and all the way down to 55 degrees. 200 watts is about the same amount of energy as two of those old school non-LED light bulbs. Hardly anything. My wife and I have been using an 8 Sleep Pod cover for the past two months. One half can be hot and the other half can be cold at the same time, which makes it perfect for the bunker. The 8 Sleep Pod cover turns any mattress into the smartest bed on the planet, learns your sleeping habits, monitors REM sleep, heart rate, and uses temperature to help you fall asleep faster and give you the most restful sleep possible, intelligently and scientifically through autopilot. There is an included subscription for the first year that makes all the smart stuff possible, and it's all clinically validated for deeper sleep. If for whatever reason you decide not to keep your subscription after the first year, the mattress will still keep its heating and cooling abilities even after the subscription is over. If, and this is where the best bed for the apocalypse kind of fizzles out, it only continues to work if you have Wi-Fi. Everything about the smart mattress cover is accessed through a smartphone and a Wi-Fi connection. And while I do consider myself a nerd, I'm not nerdy enough to know if there's a way to generate my own Wi-Fi field in the bunker so I can keep using my mattress even into the apocalypse. A cozy apocalypse is the best apocalypse. The A Sleep Pod cover is pretty expensive, but it is one of a kind and both me and my wife really like ours. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. One cool thing about excavators is not only are they good at moving dirt and digging holes, but they can also act as cranes, which we need since our shaft is currently horizontal and it needs to be vertical before the B-decking can get attached to the sides. So far we've been welding the entry shaft on its side, and now we're going to use the excavator to tip it upright so we can finish putting the B-decking on the sides, which will keep it waterproof down in this hole, which has magically appeared. Clip her in, Nate. Yikes. That is so much weight. <laughs> Nate, how much does this tower weigh? As is, it's about 6,500 pounds. 6,500 pounds just kind of hanging there off to the side. This is how we're gonna get in and out of the bunker. Oh, that is terrifying. There's gonna be a ladder through this opening as well as an elevator, which we haven't designed yet, but it's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Right, it's gonna be a really good video. <laughs> Pretty amazing. The metal we're putting on the outside of the elevator shaft is corrugated 18 gauge B decking. The worst part though about this B decking is that it's galvanized, which makes it extremely dangerous to weld with without the right equipment. The metal sheets have added another $6,149 to the overall cost of the bunker, but with how strong they are, it's worth every penny. The corrugated V decking uses concrete forms for large steel buildings. Lay down the sheet metal and pour concrete on top. They weigh about 163 pounds each. We're leaning the panels up into place and using an automotive floor jack to raise them into position, where they can be welded to the steel frame that we built earlier. Between the panels, there's a groove where we put Loctite construction adhesive, which will help keep the whole thing watertight once it's submerged beneath my backyard. Tomorrow the crane comes, so we're working pretty late into the night. And this is where, just like in Loki's multiverse, the timelines all start to come together. Before we bring the entry shaft down into the hole we excavated in the last video, we're throwing in some of the larger pieces of metal for the flooring, so we don't have to cut it into pieces and work it down the entry shaft later.
think the crane is uh, strong enough for this. As well as we're dropping down some of the EcoFlow batteries that we're using for welding, we're using the EcoFlows this time around mostly because I have four of them. And they'll last a ridiculously long time underground without needing to charge back up until I get the solar panels installed. The entry shaft is slightly outside the radius of the crane's reach, so we have to bring it closer with the excavator. The more the crane's boom is extended, the less weight the crane is able to hold. And this entry shaft is right around 10,000 pounds now. The closer we are to the crane, the safer it gets. And safety is in our top three priorities. Again, the best purchase of this project so far, besides that cool magnet thing, was having the crane come to set the tubes and this entry shaft. The precision required and the ability to navigate the small spaces in my backyard make this crane worth every penny. Hoisting the components of my bunker effortlessly through the air, over the trees, is a beautiful sight to behold. Plus, like I mentioned before, you can't put a price on safety, and this crane is by far the safest way to move this amount of weight. The potential energy of 10,000 pounds hovering in the air is extremely terrifying. I literally cannot say enough good things about this crane since it made the entire project possible. Kind of crazy that I thought we could do it without one. Once the entry shaft was down in the hole, we did have to rotate the tubes ever so slightly to get them to line up with the entry shaft and our flange positioned on the flat surface of the metal plates so the tubes can be bolted and welded together when we waterproof everything. And this jack stand is doing a fantastic job of ever so slowly shifting the edge over so it's flush. Watch this thin bead of light disappear, hopefully. Perfect timing. As the sun is going down, we have completed submerging the bunker. It is a massive accomplishment. Hello, tree branch. That is a massive accomplishment, getting it below ground. My wife is gonna be super happy about that part. And I'm just glad everyone is safe and everything is secure at the bottom of the hole. Even though it doesn't have its furnishings or the floor quite yet, I think we should take a little tour. Thoughts? Went better than I thought it would. <laughs> It is so tall, I can't wait to go inside. That looks good so far. I'm terrified of heights. <laughs> you gonna be okay? I'll be all right, but coming over that's gonna scare me. The sound you hear is the crane packing up. <laughs> this is so cool. We're tacking the bunker to the sidewall right here. Well, there was nice light while you were doing that. Well, this is it. This is going to be the master bedroom right here. Bunk bedroom right here. The biggest TV you can imagine right here. And then like a kitchen area of batteries. Welcome to my humble abode. This is amazing. Thank you for watching and joining in on this project. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I'll see you again next week, hopefully when we have a floor, get these leaves out and made everything watertight. See ya.